I'm gonna show you something right now, but you have to promise to be cool about it, okay? This is an Emperor Titan. All this is scratch built by my friend Alphonse, who, uh, Hmm. I reckon Forge Wheel had drop pods for like 250 oh, or 300 this is bucks. Right now. Squirty bottle. Alphonse is the sort of guy to scratch build a drop pod out of junk because they're too expensive to buy out of principle. And then when they become affordable, buy the real version and then hand wrap it with images from the Space Spring Codex. Al makes so much stuff. Here is one thing that he made for his sisters of battle and he made this to raise money for our local tabletop club what a guy and he asked if i could help do all the greebling on the model what are greebles what is greebling greebling is the act of adding all these tiny little details to the model to make it look realistic add narrative all this that's been my job My greebling process is sort of layers. I add lots of little greebles around the place and then I add layers to it, like these aeroplane wings as sort of this armor plating, armature wire to make piping, green stuff to make hoses and cables. This is picture hanging wire, which is a really nice sort of texture. Is it gonna be annoying to paint? Absolutely. That's not my problem. I'm really sorry, Al. <laughs> my friend Bill from Berserker Works actually made these cool little air conditioner pieces, which I've used everywhere. I even mold and cast them into my own sort of greebly clusters that I filled with plaster and glued all over this piece. It also sort of feels a bit weird making stuff and then covering it up. But when you look down the panels, you see all the detail and I think it just sells it all so much. Even if it gets covered up, you know the magic is still sort of there, right? Alphonse's plan isn't only to make a model, but also a fully accessible interior. Like you can take all this out and play on the inside. There's flaps and hinges everywhere. If you want to play a game on this, you can. Not only that, Al is also going to build a sewage system all through here that you can place your models through. That's not all. So, I've got this here. <laughs> there, there's the generator. Oh my, it goes in there like that. Man. Scratch building is such an important part of my hobby because it's made the inaccessible accessible. Especially when I was a very broke teenager, when I had no money to do the same hobbies that my friends were doing. Look, I'm pretty convinced I don't have the first models that I scratch built, but I reckon I can recreate them pretty quickly. Mounting tack, blue tack, uh, sticky tack, whatever you call it, wherever you're from, and paper clips. As like an 11, 12 year old kid, I had a vague understanding of the idea of millipart, green stuff, any sort of two part epoxy. Obviously, I couldn't afford that, so I used sticky tack, and to make it permanent, I covered it in super glue. Mmm, those super glue fumes are really bringing me back right now. <laughs> and once one layer is dry, it's time for another. Essentially, we're making a gusher. Hard outside, soft interior. There we go, in all its glory, just like I would have made when I was a young teenager. After a lot of messing around, this is what I've come up with on this side. Yeah, look, I, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy. It's nice and layered, got a bit of depth to it. Um, I'm overall pretty happy with this shape. This side, I think, is even better. These skulls aren't looking quite mean enough for me, so I'm going to sculpt in a stronger brow, more akin to these old school games workshop skulls.
Scratch built models serve a really important purpose in my local tabletop club. It's how we get to play defunct games that are no longer supported by the original companies that made them. This is a balsa wood ship that my friend John carved for the game Man of War, an old games workshop game. And this is from his Zinch Demons Army. And I have no idea what the model is. All I know is that there's rules for it, but no official miniature. This is the stuff I love. These are the kind of armies that I would play against any day of the week rather than a pro painted army full of official models. I don't care. This is what I love to play with. You know, making stuff, I think sometimes we forget to talk about the little roadblocks that get in our way. And I went out for some milk to make a coffee to work on this Titan. And that sound panel that was once up there is now on the floor and has taken a massive chunk out of that table I built. You know what, it's okay. I'm going to show you how to fix stuff, which is sometimes just as important as learning to make stuff. <sighs> even though this is a pain in my heart. <laughs> we have to be careful with our placement of the gap filler. What we're trying to do is get enough adhesion, but also allow airflow to go through the gaps and actually dry the gap filler. Because if you create a perfect seal, the air will never get to the middle of this and the gap filler will probably never dry. But if we're careful, this should work quite well. Okay. Ugh. To really strengthen things up, we're gonna use a chopstick. I really wanna avoid having to paint my repairs as much as I can, so I'm gonna show you a trick. This is colored oxide, and this is what you use to stain concrete with, grout with. You only need a tiny little amount, and we're going to use some multi Ugh, purpose filler. This stuff is, is a powder, you add a little bit of water to it, you don't need much, you mix it up, turns into a paste. This is the filler that we applied earlier and now we can smash it up to blend it all together. Balance restored, everything is fine. I have some miscast adventures coming up that I would really, really love to partake in. And to do that, I'm raising some dosh on miscast.co by selling some original one of one pieces, including these silicon molds, which I've been using on the Titan. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff there. I just realized I haven't taken any castings of these and I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm a fool. Enjoy these. Uh, because I'll never see the light of day from me again. Yeah, there's also some new merch if you want to check that out. This is probably going to be an on and off project with Al and I, but in the meantime, you should check out my friend Eric from Eric's Hobby Workshop, who's building a seven foot tall Emperor Titan. We talked about it a lot while making this build, so please go check it out. I like all the vertical pieces. This is Alphonse's side and this is my side. We do all this work and then we just cover it up with a gun. That is model making.